Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to work with imaginary numbers or simplify numbers under the radical sign that are negative. So imaginary numbers, we say i for imaginary is equal to the square root of negative 1. It is, in a real world sense, impossible to take two numbers and multiply them together, and those two numbers being the same number, and get a negative. Because, for example, I know 3 times 3 is 9, and I know negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9. And when you take the square root, remember, it's a number times itself. And so to try to take the square root of a negative number, you have to use imaginary numbers. So here we go. The first thing you want to do is take the number under the radical and split it up into two parts. I like to split it up into a positive component and then the negative 1 component. And then ask yourself, can you take the square root of 256? So you have to go through and think, okay, what two numbers can I multiply that are the same two numbers together that will equal 256? Well, I know 16 times 16 is 256. But I can't take the square root of negative 1 in the real world sense, but I can apply the square root of negative 1 using imaginary numbers or an imaginary world. And we said that the square root of negative 1 is i. So if I asked you what is the square root of negative 1 from an imaginary number sense, you would tell me that is that it is i. And so the answer to number 1 is 16 times i. Let's do another easy one here. First thing you want to do is break this up into two components, a positive and a negative component. And let's see what we're able to take the square root of. Can we take the square root of 16? Yes, it's 4. But then the question is, how do I take the square root of negative 1? Well, if you go back up to our example here, we can represent that the square root of negative 1 is actually represented by the letter i. And so our answer is 4 times i, or 4i. But what happens like number 8 if you can't take the square root of the positive component? So let's break this up into two parts, the positive component and then the negative 1. I can't take the square root of 200 perfectly. But what I want to do is find two numbers. Does the square root of, goes into 200 that I can take the square root of. So I can take the square root of 100. So you'll see that I've broken this up into two parts here. Let's actually take the square root of 100. It's 10. Let's take the square root of negative 1. It's i. What you cannot simplify, you simply leave under the radical. And so there's our answer. All right. Let's do one more here. Let's look at this guy. Split it up into a positive and negative component. I cannot take the perfect square root of 50, so I'm going to take one step further and break it up into two parts. I can not take the square root of 25. Let's actually simplify. What is the square root of 25? It's 5. What is the square root of negative 1? It's i. And then we simply leave what we cannot simplify underneath the radical. And that's how you simplify negative square roots.